This is Josh Dro at Starlight G Recording. This is my original large scale subwoofer. The actually the first one I built. Um, this speaker cabinet is five feet wide, four feet high, and two feet deep. It is very similar to the other one in size, but the ports are different. And the speaker is different too. It has a low rider PV Black Widow series speaker. It's an 800 watt speaker. But the other one was a 1200 watt. These speakers are 4 ohms and these speakers are hard to get. And I get maximum power of my power amp and these speakers. They have the same passive crossover that was in the other one. But these speakers are 98 decibels like the other one. And these go down to 25 hertz. But with the cabinet, I believe it goes down to 7 hertz. And it's a hefty cabinet. The beams are as just as big as the one that I put on YouTube. But it has three ports in the front. And I believe it has 8 by 14 port in the back. And it's very huge. And big. So there's a lot of port space in this cabinet. And it thumps too. And I have two of these 18 inch low rider speakers. And the other cabinet that's on the other side is as tall, but it's only half as wide. So the base won't go as low. But this one does. And it's very heavy and big. I bet it weighs about 300 pounds or even 400. And these don't have the double stack magnet, but the full ohms impedance and the 98 decibels. Extremely loud and beefy and this will lock the house just like the other one. And break windows too. And this speaker is being powered by a QSC 2450A power amp down to 4 ohms. And it's extremely loud. So I'm pretty much getting the full power of the speaker. And you don't have to crank this speaker up to make it rumble. And these amps have a VU meter LEDs on the power amp so you don't clip it. 
I can turn it up one fourth of the power and it's already way too loud and it rumbles the house big time and is a beast of a speaker and I call it the Titanic so like I said it's got three ports in the front and inside the cabinet it's got different size ports on the bottom and it's got a big old gaping port in the back so you can't put the speaker fully against the wall you gotta have a little bit of space between the cabinet and the wall but it can blow out a cigarette lighter or the kind that I can use on barbecues and it's amazing how low the base is on these and these are not an air suspension type speaker it doesn't have the foam it has the accordion surround on it and it pushes a lot of air, big time. I mean, a lot of air. And it rumbles. And it sure does, to put it mildly. And it sounds good on all kinds of music. You don't have to have it up loud. In fact, I could put it on a record, play it normally, and it doesn't matter where in the house, you can hear the bass plainly and cleanly, and it does not matter which room that you're in. You can hear the bass all through the house. And the crossover, is a 250 hertz hefty crossover I think it's rated about 600 watts I'm not sure and that's a passive crossover and like on the last video it's also being crossed over electronically you just hear a low bass comes out and it is very hefty sounding very low in fact you only hear on the very subsonic bass frequencies and also I have it hooked up to an EQ and I anything from 50 hertz and up is turned down and the main EQ has a built-in electronic crossover I have that set up pretty low probably around 60 hertz maybe maybe 100 I'm not sure because the knobs in the back and when I run the subwoofer with my stack of speakers I have in the front that I'm going to do a video of after I get done with the subwoofer video it compares seamlessly with my wall of speakers I have in the front stage And it sounds great on movies, vinyl records, CD, and it's not like the subwoofers that these people put in the car. It's very smooth sounding. And PV came out with these speakers maybe about 10 years ago. And all 
Black Widow type speakers have a replacement basket that bolts onto the magnet of the speaker and it takes a very little power to push these speakers. I mean very little power because they're so efficient. And the voice coil and the paper is fairly heavy duty and they're built really good too. But I made sure I don't clip the speaker and don't let the power amp clip and I keep my eyes on the LED level meters on the power amps so clipping does not clip on the amps but the speaker so loud that I never clip the speakers because I got so much power on my subwoofers and on my main speakers and also there's a big brace board in the back of the speaker cabinet with the outer boards mount to and going from side by side and there's also beams going from up and down and like I said, side by side. I mean, this cabinet is very heavy braced. And I had to put this on casters because it's very hard to, in fact, you can't even lift this speaker with two guys. That's how heavy it is. And I've seen speakers like these in home theaters and the cinemas. And all my speakers have Speakon connectors on them. And they're the 40 amp grade. And I try to use 12 gauge speaker wire on all my subwoofers because I'm pumping a lot of power. And that speaker took a while to build. And a lot of wood to make it. I had the boards ready for the sides, the top and the bottom. I built a whole new front. And I believe I use, I think it's a two by four or two by three braces inside the cabinet. So if I took off the back of the cabinet, you could fit inside the speaker. That's how big it is. And it looks like a garage inside the speaker cabinet. So it's pretty hefty. And if I crank this long enough, you could probably hear the speaker about four blocks away. And it's only an 18 inch speaker, but it's 800 watts continuous power handling. So, this is part one of the subwoofer, and this was the first one that I built. Talk to you later from Starlight G Recording.